Alright guys, so I um, am going to begin my series on the taxonomic classification of the Lepidoptera. Um, I wanted to just start off with a couple of quick notes about this. Um, in case anybody is familiar with the YouTuber Aaron Ra, um, Aaron has a series um, that I will link in the description of this video called the Systematic Classification of Life, where he basically runs through the... Um, ancestry I believe of man um, and he goes through all of the different groups humans belong to starting with um, the eukaryota and you know I think he's now about to go on to the mammal group um, basically he follows the fossil evidence and genetic evidence to demonstrate why we fall into all of the different classifications that we do, starting at the very base level, which would be um, domain, kingdom, and going from there. Um, my video series will be slightly different. Um, his video series basically looks at the lineage that leads to human beings and um, goes from one extant line to the next, showing the now extinct branch points that came off of the first ancestor, and um, I am mostly focused on the Lepidoptera and where they fall in relation to each other. Um, I'll be looking at a variety of extant lines within one group, which will be the order Lepidoptera. Um, but other than that, it's going to be an explanation of where things fall um, taxonomically. And um, I wanted to quickly explain how taxonomy works and how we know what we do. Um, Taxonomy basically has these main groups. Um, I just pulled this picture off the internet. Um, there is also domain, which would be eukaryota or prokaryota. Um, and within those, you'd have um, your, uh, within the prokaryota, you'd have your bacteria and your archaea. Um, we're not going to worry too much about that. But um, you have kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. And I know that between all of these, there can be various things. There are sub-kingdoms, there are sub-phyla, super-classes, super-phyla, um, sub-class. You can have super-orders and a variety of things. You can have infra-orders, which are basically alternative ways of looking at the way things fall in relation to each other. Um, and taxonomy basically works by um, having everybody that's the closest to each other being within the same species. And then as things go further apart, you can have things within the same genus, things within the same family, and so on. And um, traditionally, morphological and embryological um, methods were used to classify things. And um, as we get into this series, we will find um, that recent evidence and recent data has corroborated most of the um, classifications based on morphology and shared characteristics, although there are some um, relationships that look like the organisms are closer to each other than they actually are. Um, one of the things about evolution is um, the idea of analogous evolution, where processes, organs, structures, whatnot, are produced in independent lines for similar purposes. And so, of course, they do look similar, even though they did not come from the same ancestor. Um, and then you obviously have organisms that look radically different, even if they are incredibly closely related. You have species such as um, dogs, humans, luna moths, and a variety of other things where within one species there is a great array of diversity, and then you can have genera of beetles and moths where you have to dissect the genitalia of the males in order to determine what species they belong to. Um, so just keep that in mind. The concept of a biological species is a little bit fuzzy. I'm not intending to address that. Um, I am hopefully going to get to the point where I'm just spewing out names of families and their relationships to one another. Um, but I just wanted to lay down the groundwork for that first. Um, the current way of assessing um, organisms' relatedness to one another is to look at their DNA. We can now extract and sequence DNA and look at the um, strands. There are specific areas of the DNA target strands that we look for, particular genes. We look at the, um, based on the evolutionary principle that things get conserved over time, the um, most basic 
portions of the organism should be similar across groups. And then um, things such as pigmentation, things such as um, enzymatic activity, things such as dietary preference, things such as adult size and whatnot will vary considerably even within a species. But things such as, you know, the DNA that codes for the ribosomes of the cell or the DNA that allows for... Um, particular cellular proteins that are important for the cell membrane to function or that are important for moving material across the cell should be similar enough between groups. And basically what we do, um, and I don't know where the line is drawn, but we take things that um, have a certain proportion of these important DNA codes that are similar or the same, and when they have a you know, high number of these portions of their DNA being identical or nearly identical, you know, we consider them within the same species. And as you get further away from that, you have more differences. They'll be within the same genus. Even more differences, you get into the same family, but different genera, different families within the same order as you go out further, until eventually you have everything falls within the same kingdom, because there are a few commonly conserved or um, ubiquitous codes, genes, functions, structures, what have you, and then as you look at any particular species, there are so many differences. Um, and this is basically how genetic evidence works. We take the DNA and look at, you know, organisms and where and how what proportion of the genome is the same or nearly the same as another one's. Um, and Again, we have our basic way of categorizing things. Um, this is basically what the tree of life, if you will, looks like now. It's more of a bush than a tree. And um, as you can see, the majority of life is prokaryotic. These are all the eukaryota. Um, and if you really want to get even closer, um, the animals fall somewhere in this portion of eukaryota. Um, I'm, I'm not even going to bother with what all that means, but these are the different um, eukaryotic branches that um, are multicellular. And what we're going to go through in the next video is um, the fact that if you have a characteristic that defines all of these, then anything here is going to have that characteristic. Um, when you get to this point of the branching, if you will, all of these guys won't have all of the same characteristics as these guys, but all of these guys will share these characteristics. All of these guys will share these characteristics. All of these guys will share these characteristics, but these guys may not share all the characteristics as these guys and vice versa, except they'll all have this particular characteristic. Um, that'll be important later when we go through the animal kingdom, which will be the next video. I'm basically going to... I'm basically quickly zooming out on all of life before we zoom in on the Lepidoptera in particular.